Hello everybody, and today we're going to be reviewing a Godzilla movie that's famous for all the wrong reasons. And of course the movie is Godzilla vs. Ebera. While Godzilla is famous for all these famous giant monster battles at the end, this one has kind of one of the most lame monsters you've ever heard of. And what famous monster that might be, you might ask? Well, drum roll please. Of course it's gotta be Ebera. Does anybody truly like this monster? In a ranking of Godzilla's best monster villains, this one would probably rank at the bottom, even below Gabara from Godzilla's Revenge. That just shows how lame the monster is in this movie. It's just so bad that they had to bring in another monster just to make the movie more interesting. And this movie wasn't even originally meant to be a Godzilla movie. It was actually originally meant to be a King Kong movie made by Toho, which would later actually be made into a movie. But I'll review that some other time. And it shows! Because Godzilla not one time acts like he normally does in any of the other movies. In this film, he even gets woke up by a lightning strike on a sword. Now let's get to the actual review itself. Wow, do the Godzilla scenes in this movie suck. While they aren't as bad as the ones in Godzilla's Revenge, which coincidentally this movie stole a lot of Godzilla scenes from, it's up there. While most Godzilla movies have the monster fights be the main focus and Godzilla's destruction mainly being the second hand thing, this film has a lot more destruction than it has monster fighting. Because the monsters in this movie are so lame. There's like this weird bird monster and then there's Ebro which is just a giant shrimp. And it's just so lame and it's boring. While there are some really great destruction scenes in this movie, it doesn't help that the actors are just there. Most of the time, they will actually help the environment, but in this movie, they are just kind of there. They're not really anything special. So you're kind of just like, okay, Godzilla, you can just destroy the entire town. Literally, nobody cares about these characters, so you can do it now. And it really adds no weight to the destruction scenes. And also, for some reason, Godzilla's the bad guy again in this movie. It just randomly swaps in between, hey, he's a good guy, now he's a bad guy, now he's a good guy, now he's a bad guy. And it gets annoying after a while, because every movie, like, swaps. And then in the last ten minutes, Mothra is just thrown in in the the f middle of the fight for no reason. Ebra dies, of course, because he's lame and he can't do anything and he's boring and he couldn't even kill uh, two people. Ebra only kills two people in this movie and they just get skewered and it's like, okay. Well, Godzilla probably killed like 5,000 people in this movie because he goes through a military base killing a bunch of people. So that just shows how weak Ebra is. And it just shows that Godzilla's gonna win this. Nobody, you don't feel like Godzilla's gonna lose. You already know he's going to win because Ebra is so weak. He's actually comparable to Gabra in Godzilla's Revenge. And the music in this movie also in Godzilla's scenes sometimes have like direct ripoffs of James Bond. And also it doesn't help that Godzilla's design is one of the worst ones in any of the Godzilla series. And also the sets aren't that good either. They don't look realistic when Godzilla's just standing there and there's also a lot of green screening for some reason. And it does just makes you feel like you're being taken out of the movie because it just isn't good. And when you want to watch a Godzilla movie, you watch it for the Godzilla scenes. I could care less about the acting, but it's just the Godzilla scenes are so bad in this movie. I mean, granted, they're not the worst Godzilla scenes in the movies, because at least it's not literally stolen from the older movies, and also, at least there is fight scenes, and not just five minutes of Godzilla being in the movie. The good thing about the Godzilla scenes is that he's in fairly a good chunk of it after the 40 minute mark. You just have to get past the quality of it to enjoy this movie. While it's nowhere near the quality of GMK, I'd give the Godzilla scenes a 6 out of 10. Pretty good job there, Shrimpy Boy. You actually got past a five, surprisingly. Because most of the Godzilla scenes, I would have given a four, but good job. You had a lot in there, so you helped yourself. The acting in this film is really, 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 really bad. But what do you expect from a 60s Godzilla film, that the acting is going to be good? For a 60s Godzilla film, the acting is kind of average, but 
for normal acting, this is really, really bad. And the dubbing makes it even worse. If you're gonna watch a Godzilla film, always watch it in a subtitled version. You never watch it dubbed because the dubbings on these films are so bad it's funny. And this is one of the worst ones. One of the characters has a really squeaky voice and it gets really obnoxious and annoying after like five minutes. And then everybody else is just there. I mean, do you really watch a Godzilla film for acting? I don't know a single person who watches these films for the acting besides the Godzilla actor. Who actually isn't very good in this film either, because he's like waving his arms around at the planes for like two minutes straight, and it's one of the stupidest and funniest looking thing I've ever seen. And a lot of the scenes in this film are used in Godzilla's Revenge and other films like it. And it doesn't help how bulky this suit looks, so the poor actor inside of there is just struggling a lot of the time during the movie. So the acting is very subpar in this film, including how they use the same shot of the freaking giant claw thing for like five times. It's really stupid because they just couldn't get a good actor to do it. You only see Eber above the water for around 10 minutes. Well, you see the poor guy in the Godzilla suit around 30 times throughout the movie and it averages around 30 minutes of the movie. So either you acted a lot in the film if you were in the monster suits or you acted barely at all. And the funny thing is though, when you're watching the film and you watch it with subtitles and it has the dub, the dub is completely different than the subtitles are. And the film itself isn't helped by the acting because the film's already bad, even for a Godzilla film, that this movie just is even worse than normal. You don't care about any of the characters because none of them are likable. One of them literally is a robber who steals a boat. Great job, Toe. Really likable characters there. And the acting, I'd say, is the lowest point of the film because literally none of the actors know what they're doing. It feels like they just were given a script and they were just reading it off. And it doesn't feel like they're actually trying to sound realistic or act like real characters. They're just kind of there. That is why I give the film's actors a 3 out of 10. It's not the worst acting I've ever seen, but I've seen way better than this as well. Just look at the original Godzilla film's actors. That film was not a very, does not have a very big budget, well it did at the time, and the actors did really well in that film, and it's one of the best horror films of all time. And this one just looks super lame compared to it with the acting. The cinematography in this film is some of the best of the Godzilla series, actually. Shots like the claw coming out of the water, and the sets that Godzilla destroys, like the giant base in the film that gets destroyed right at the end. So for a Godzilla film, the shots are actually very well done in this film, which is very shocking considering everything else in this film is pretty lame. Although this film does have some really bad green screen spots in it that make it look very poor. So surprisingly, this film actually has good things about it. Everything looks nice and very smooth in the film as well. And everything fits well with the music as well. So this film has a good balance of good things and bad things to it as well. So I give the cinematography a 9 out of 10. The music in this film is also seen as some of the best in the series. The soundtrack is some of the best of the 60s Godzilla films that you're ever going to hear. This film shows how to do a Godzilla film soundtrack. Because it has a lot of cheese to it, but it, that's what Godzilla film is about. It's supposed to be cheesy. And the cheesiness of this soundtrack actually helps the film a lot. A lot. This movie also has some of the weirdest songs in the entire history of the Godzilla franchise. And that is why I give the soundtrack to this film an a 8 out of 10. This film showed how to do show its soundtracks correctly, and it did some of the best of the entire franchise. Well, I gave it that score, and now let's get to the final results. While the film has great overall intentions, the acting really held this film down. But everything else in this film is pretty good, that's why I gave it the final score of 6.5 out of 10.